Hi guys, on and off we've all had one or the other question regarding something or the other and in aviation. And since aviation is such a huge subject, I don't think we can all cover all the subjects, but uh, this is a humble attempt at answering at least some of your questions. Okay, so today what I have here with me is a Jepson approach plate for Mumbai, India. And I'll be going through the basic symbology which you would be seeing in any approach plate published by Jepson. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to note, uh, show you is this is the approach plate that we are going to discuss today. Okay, so it's quite an old one, somewhere in 2008, I think. Okay, but doesn't matter, symbology remains the same. Okay. okay, so this is the beginning of it and uh, for your convenience on the right side of the page I have mentioned the most important things that we will be covering. Alright, so in the top left you can see Victor Alpha Bravo Bravo slash Bravo Oscar Mike. Now this the first one is the ICAO code for Mumbai and the second one is the IATA code and you also you can see the name of the airport over here Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport and this is the symbol of the airline for which this chart was made and this is important to be kept in mind because um, I'll tell you later okay so all right next moving on here you can see a date that is 14 November 2008 this is the date on which this chart was published now on most charts you can again see another date just below this that would be written as EFF and there would be the date length. For example, if you see EFF 30 November 2008, okay. in that case it means that this chart would be effective from that date, that is 30th of November. Now in this case you don't see such a date, it means that the publishing date and the effective date is the same. That is the chart is published and it's effective from 14th of November 2008 onwards. Okay, all right. Now, this here you see is the chart index number, and the box it contains is also special because just a normal Jepson chart would just have a oval box. Now, here on the left side, you can see a little dark shaded uh, side with a rectangular end. This means that this chart has been modified for a specific company. And in this case, like I said earlier, this chart is for Air India, right? So that means this chart is made and modified for Air India. Now inside the chart index number, you can see 11-1 alpha. The first digit 1 stands for the airport. So every airport has been allocated a different number. And those are random numbers. Okay. So here one stands for Mumbai basically as of now. Okay. Now the second letter one that stands for the type of approach. Okay, so for your approach you'll have another digit, for ILS you'll have another digit, and GPS another one, SID another one, sorry. So we'll get into the details of that later as to which number represents what kind of an approach. Okay. Now the third one the third digit is the filing order and here you can say it's one alpha so there, if there's a one bravo that would be obviously coming behind one alpha right, right moving on and you, you can see where this is located it's for mumbai india and this is an ils approach for runway 090 okay now this box over here you see this is called the heading or as you can see on the left side it is mentioned briefing strip now the briefing strip initially begins with the frequencies which you're going to use in the order in which you're going to use like here first one is the 80s frequency so obviously when you're going to start an approach before that you'll be tuning first into the ATS and listening to all the weather information what is the QNH etc right and then you will be tuning into Mumbai approach frequency and in a small bracket you can see the letter R 
that means that radar facility is available. And once you are handed over from approach down, you'll be tuning in to the tower frequency. So that is why next you have your tower frequency. Once you've landed, you get even touch touch with ground frequency. So that is also mentioned over here. After that, you can see the localizer frequency that is India Bravo Oscar Mike 1090 decimal 5. And most of the localizer frequencies start with the letter I. I standing for ILS. Now, here you can see your final approach course is 0901. That is, once you've done all your approaches and uh, you're established on the top of approach, this should be a course. After that, you can see this is the glide slope check altitude. Now, this is something very important because there's something called a false glide slope. And this occurs mostly at twice the normal slope of the glide slope. So if you have a standard glide slope of 3 degrees, the first wrong glide slope would be at 6 degrees. And this is the main reason why we intercept the glide slope from below, not from above. So that you make sure you intercept the first one which is the actual one. And this altitude is to make sure you have, you have intercepted the correct glide slope. That is if you are on the right one at 4 ILS DME you should be at 12900 feet and the altitude you see in brackets that is the above ground level altitude this one this is the ILS decision altitude that is 270 feet and in brackets you can see what is above ground level and what is DA and why DA why not MDA See, decision altitude is an altitude to which you can descend, okay? Once you reach that altitude, you look outside. Are you visual with the runway? Yes, continue with the approach. No, initiate missed approach procedure. So there, you basically don't get a time frame where you can think and decide do you want to continue or not. has to be instantaneous. That is the main difference in an MDA or that is basically a minimum descent altitude and this is a decision altitude understand the difference okay and we get to the details later when we come to the minimus next here you have your airport elevation which is 37 feet and the runway elevation is 15 feet okay airport elevation is in most countries it is the highest point of all usable runways some countries though refer to the aerodrome reference point for the airport elevation. Now and below that you can see the runway elevation which is 15 feet and that is specific to runway 09. Below this you have the missed approach procedure which is climb straight ahead at 1 ILS DMA past the threshold turn right to intercept radar 110 climbing to 2600 feet then climbing turn right to join holding at 3700 feet or as directed by the ATC and below that you can see there is a maximum speed limit also which is maximum 185 knots until as established on radial 110 bravo 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 so bravo 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 is the Mumbai VO below that few more details Altimeter setting will be in hectopascals. Runway elevation is 1 hectopascal. See below, above here you had mentioned it's 15 feet. So normally our calculation is roughly about 1 hectopascal is 27 feet. So rounding off to the higher one, that is why 1 hectopascal. Next you have the transition level will be as given by the ATC. And your transition altitude is at 4000 feet. And one more important thing to conduct this approach, DMA is absolutely required. Now, you have a small box on the right side. This box contains your MSA or your minimum safety altitude. This altitude 
gives you 1000 feet clearance against the highest obstacle within 25 nautical mile radius of the bravo 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 VOR and here you can see if you are approaching the uh, VOR on a course of 160 to a course of 020 from the western sector your MSA would be 2600 feet and if approaching it from the eastern sector your MSA is 3700 feet and there is also a uh, ball flag over here which is described over here as 2600 feet within 12 nautical miles means your MSA would be 2600 feet slightly lower within 12 nautical miles and after 12 nautical miles it is 3700 feet okay so this is the explanation of the heading or the briefing strip and next we will go and move on to the plan view or the top view.